So Philips has finally entered the dash cam market in India through their newest dash cam, the GoSure 3001. Now before I talk about the dash cam, we all know how common the brand name Philips is in India. The brand itself carries the heritage of providing you always with the latest technology with the best available quality. So how good is this new Philips dash cam and is this worth your money? By the time you finish watching this video, you'll have the answer to that question. You're watching Travel Tech, let's get started. All right, so here's the dash cam you all have been waiting to take a look at the Philips GoShow dash cam video camera GS3001. You get a picture of the dash cam, looks pretty smart. You have the maximum resolution this cam supports that is Full HD 1080p. They've also put in a seal which says this is automotive quality grade. So on the other side of the box, there's nothing else. But here are some important technical specifications of the dash cam. It is a 2 megapixel CMOS sensor. Video resolution is Full HD 1920 x 1080 f2.0 aperture. The file format is MP4. Accessories provided within the box is a micro USB power cable and a user manual. Interface is a micro USB port, micro SD slot, a microphone and a speaker. Features include collision detection based on G sensor I think and a driver fatigue alert. So on the box they have given the MRP as about 8999 but you get this at about 5999 on Amazon that's about 6000 rupees. So let's quickly open up the box and show you what you get if you buy the Philips dash cam. Hmm nice. It has got this matte silvery finish and all this circular design there are no sharp edges maybe except for the windshield mount. The grey half of the dash cam looks more like a capsule. You have this prominent Philips branding at the front, the lens on the other side. At the bottom you find a reset slot. On the back you have a mic slot and this is probably the LED light. On the driver side of the dash cam you get a micro SD slot, a micro USB port. And this is probably the speaker. So you have a 3M sticker mount for the windshield and the dash cam is rotatable. Let's see how much it rotates. Nice. This rotates the entire 360 degrees which means you can also record the cabin of the car. And in case if your car has a flat windshield like the Thar or Bolero or some others like that, this dash cam is pretty much compatible with the flat windshields as well. As you can see there is a sufficient gap between the lens and the windshield mount. So that's also a cool thing. Nothing else in the dash cam, a smart sleek capsule shaped dash cam with the branding of the Philips right in front. Let's jump in into the box and see what do they provide for the price. So at first you have this micro USB cable right here. So this is the main power cable and you get a user guide. The detailed technical specifications are also provided. You can pause the video and take a look at this if you're interested. So that's it. These are the two things in the box, the dash cam and the power cable. You'll need to buy a separate charger in case you don't have one, but most of us already have it. So I've already explained all the detailed features of this dash cam. So let's move on and take a look at the video quality this dash cam provides and see if it's worth the money. So here's the first sample which I want to show you guys. Now this is specifically during night time and the car in front is about a distance of 5 to 10 feet away. And if I zoom in on its number plate, a decent read, softer image, not much sharpness in this and you can also note some level of noise within this image. The overall number plate readability is decent. I mean at a close range 1080p cameras almost all of them work really well. The point to note is that in this specific example the number plate is not under the glare of my headlights and that's one of the main reasons you are able to make this number plate out. So at a close range of about 5 to 10 feet, this camera should be able to give you a good read and a decent read of a number plate. Moving on to the next sample, now this is during daytime and the Maruti Brezza which is right in front is more or less at the same distance what we saw at the previous example. And if we zoom in on the plate this time, a very similar experience, a softer image, not much sharpness in this, it also does have a warm tone to it. You also might notice some dashboard reflection coming off of the windshield and that's due to the bright sunlit condition specifically at the time when I was shooting this video. Very minimal noise here and there. The overall readability of the number plate is still decent. I mean at a close range all 1080p cameras really work well and you can't be really expecting anything more from this. Now moving on to the overall video footage quality. 
now this is specifically during daytime and you do note that it gives off a slight warm tone also the video footage is much softer than what i initially expected the brightness and contrast levels more or less look pretty much well balanced and this video kind of gives off a soothing experience when you look at it doesn't it the video footage is more than enough for what a 1080p camera can do for you and in this case the philips gosher is also giving out a very decent a very usable video footage quality during daytime also do note that this has a resolution of 1080p at a 30 frames per second it has a bitrate of about 8000 kbps and a file size of about 61 mb per minute moving on to the night footage quality you also note that similar warm tone coming off in the night footage as well along with the softer image you do tend to see a tad bit less level of sharpness in the image and that's not a major factor because the overall video footage quality is still decent and pretty much usable so for a 1080p camera during both day and night conditions the philips gosher is offering a decent footage quality and this should be good enough for you to use as evidence or just to look at what all the things that have happened while you were out on your car journey and for the price this camera is doing its job pretty well so if you want to install this camera you need to make sure that you first insert a compatible memory card within it and also remove the sticker which is covering the lens of the camera at front also remove the sticker from the windshield mount of the dash cam following that just stick the dash cam to your specified space or required space on the windshield just press on it gently and then power up the dash cam using the micro usb port connect it to your 12 volt car charger and the dash cam is pretty much ready to use also one thing which i wanted to show you guys is that the windshield mount is detachable which means you can take out the dash cam out from the windshield mount so you just need to slide it to your left and the dash cam comes off pretty easily and if you need to put it back just align the pins and slide it and it goes back and fits into its place also note guys that if you rotate the camera towards the cabin like this the video feed on the app also rotates but it doesn't flip to a proper orientation but nevertheless this is still an option which you can use in order to record the inside portion of the cabin if ever required to do that you just need to flip it back using a video editor so when the dash cam is connected to the app it gives off a white led glow a slow blinking white led when it's connected to the app but when the app gets disconnected from the dash cam the white LED turns into a blue LED. Now it indicates that the dash cam is recording. So as soon as you install and open the app for the first time, you need to agree to the privacy policy in order to be able to use the app in tandem with the dash cam. So let's click on agree and turn on. So you get the option to connect to the device. Let's click on the add recorder button. Then you need to connect to the recorder Wi-Fi. Please turn on location. So I'll just turn on the location on my smartphone. Click on cancel and click on back again. So mobile phone system permissions are required. So it's asking for a location permission. It's an OK. And while using the app. Select recorder Wi-Fi and connect. So let's click on add recorder. Let's search for the Wi-Fi here. So here is the Wi-Fi GoSure 3001. Let's click on that. Password should be one two three four five six seven eight i think that's the password yes it is so this is basically the app experience so the main home page you get the live view and in case if you rotate the camera you get to set the angle which is required as per your convenience so you have a take video of 10 seconds button here you have a take photo button and a album button What's this? This is the disconnect device button. Okay, right. So let's head into the settings. So within the settings, there are a lot of menus and sub menus. So this is the main general setting and on top you find the resolution option. If you click on that, you have 1080p 30fps and 720p 30fps. So you have a loop recording video which you can select to a maximum of 5 minutes and a minimum of 1 minute. Then you have the record audio option which you can enable or disable basically the mic option then you have the boot sound which you can enable or disable and the volume which you can select as low medium or high or completely mute if you don't want to listen to it then you have wdr which you can enable or disable basically this is the wide dynamic range then you have the language setting 
so currently only two languages english and chinese i guess following that you have the light frequency in which you can select either 50 hertz or 60 hertz then following that you have the time setting you can select it manually or set it to sync automatically with your smartphone then you have the ev setting following that you have the video watermark label so you can enable or disable that following that you have the format memory card which we just did right now and then finally you have the restore factory settings for the dash cam then you have the device settings wherein you can set the collision sensitivity to you have three options low medium or high also you have a separate option to turn it off completely then you have the record mode option if you click on that you have three options time lapse video parking mode or turn it off completely then you have the driver fatigue alert now this is going to give you a reminder every one hour or two hours or four hours and of course you can turn it off completely then you have the wi-fi settings where you can change the wi-fi ssid and password then the last sub menu of the settings we need to find the memory card free space the version number device number firmware upgrade option is here which is really good and then common problems basically the faqs associated with this device all in all the app settings and the ui of the app is pretty simple pretty basic and pretty straightforward there's no complexity there's no hi-fi stuff built into it so overall for the price of 6000 rupees philips is offering you a super cool 1080p dash cam and this carries a huge brand value behind it so if you're someone who has been purchasing philips products their entire lifetime a dash camera will be a new and an interesting entry within your philips lineup so if you are interested in purchasing this dash cam the link to purchase it is provided in the description below so just head down click on the description and you'll find the link right there if you have any more doubts or queries regarding this dash cam, you can always write that down in the comments and I'll try to get back to you as soon as possible. So in case if this video has helped you in making that right purchase decision, make sure to go ahead and hit that subscribe button and smash that like button. Also, don't forget to hit the bell icon so that you get notified each time I upload a new video. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.